मॉड्यूल इलेवन यामाटो पेंटिंग आई डॉक्टर रीता प्रताप फॉर्मर हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ड्राइंग एंड पेंटिंग यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ राजस्थान आई एम गोइंग टू स्पीक ऑन जैपनीज पेंटिंग यामाटो पेंटिंग यामाटो इज अ कैलकुलेटेड डेकोरेटिव स्टाइल एंड एन आर्ट of careful placement and juxta positions of color and texture yamato is a term used to designate its inception and means simply japanese style painting the term yamato a first appeared in the diary of the poet fujiwara yuki nari on the 30th day of the 10th month in the equivalent of the year 999 he says he drew a fan painting in yamato for a folding screen the alternative kara a was probably already by that time moving toward a black ink style of landscape and adding more color was a natural japanese reaction since the subject matter of yamato was drawn largely from the japanese literature at this stage it was necessary to provide graphic context for stories in a uniquely japanese manner the yamato developments were possibly because of the japanese freedom to select a chart new courses they had no restricting philosophy of the arts in particular the art of painting which was the art of statesmen and philosophers yamato was an ancient name for japan and yamato are paintings that essentially depict purely japanese subjects as opposed to kara a which shows chinese subject the earliest yamato appeared during heian period at a time when almost all painting was religious and differed from the usual religious iconography of the time in that they showed didactic images illustrating how buddhism was introduced to japan but with recognizable japanese detail and background scenery the culmination of japanization may be seen in the 1053 biodin phonics hall murals yamato landscape paintings were greatly influenced by the highly developed Japanese literature of the time that is poem on the four seasons on famous scenic spots on mono no avere or the pathos literally the ahness of things departing from chinese notions of spring for example indigenous new poems replace the snow prunus with cherry blossoms majestic mountains with cozy paddy fields the world of japanese imagery shimmered with wisteria the seashore springs rain spring moon and spring mist in poetry and painting alike an example is the early spring landscape on the door panel of the phonics hall a gentle river scene combines lushness and a sense of intimacy typical of japanese landscapes with favorite details the meandering river the sand shoal with its few reeds remaining from the last year still covered in snow the pine clad hills and the thatched roofs of the cottages the colors are applied in flat layers 
with volume suggested by discrete intensifications of the green and white the only sense of motion is provided by the rippling lines of the river bed the later predilection for laterally spreading motifs is hinted at here in the fan shaped silhouettes of the pines the simplicity of the scene belies the sophistication of its rendering it is evocative and poetic perhaps it depicts one of the famous places so often mentioned in hian literature as do so many later so called decorative screens but if we were to consider such work as being merely decorative we would miss a good deal of emotion peculiar to japanese art decorative art is passive and static with visual elements harmoniously interacting this scene is vibrantly alive and invites an emotional response from the spectator to see for instance the free floating cloud forms where the pigment is sprinkled on rather than brushed the clouds seem to breathe and so seem charged with motion and emotion in the otherwise still space they function as emotional indicators henceforth providing this quickening and poignancy this unique motif is called emotive cloud the hian artist may have chosen this scene and this way of depicting it in order to express the first quivering of new year's joy he may even have been inspired by the poem in contemporary anthology go senshu dated to 951 ad thus in hian art nature motifs function to express human emotions this period also saw the development of e making which are long narrow paper scrolls backed with silk and painted with narrative images that illustrate a story or a legend in yamato style such hand scrolls were designed after imported chinese buddhist scriptures and were unrolled from right to left to reveal scenes that progressed in a narrative form the narrative scroll the style of narrative scrolls was based on scenes which flowed easily from right to left parallel to the picture plane the relatively shallow space keeping the story moving steadily along the yamato painting of japanese subject matter developed some unique features in the illustrated narrative hand scrolls or e meki mono the mansions of the emperors and the fujiwara nobility were furnished by screens biobu and sliding doors fusuma faced with paper which offered ideal surfaces for decoration in the new style the hand scroll is unrolled 30 to 80 cm at a time over a desk and pursued at leisure the artist and the spectator communicate one to one work for such project was divided among a great number of painting masters ishi often members of the aristocracy who selected the scenes laid down the drawing for the composition and indicated 
the coloring artisans then mixed the pigments and filled in the colors toji landscape screens is almost the only example that has survived from that period on the other hand over 100 sets of hand scrolls e meki or e meki mono dating from 12th to 14th century have been handed down in temples or private collections it is in these scrolls that the development and variety of yamato could be studied akiyama terakazu a japanese scholar has divided them into the following groups secular scrolls of purely artistic character these include illustrated novels written chiefly by court ladies folk tales and historical narratives illustrations of poems and portraits of famous poets and illustrations of military novels secular scrolls serving a practical purpose usually documentary among these are pictures of court ceremonies and of military campaigns and exploits edifying scrolls of religious nature which include in gaiko scrolls illustrations to sutras that is scriptures and to the lives of great monks and religious leaders and include moralizing scrolls that depict human afflictions and the horrors of hell they are chiefly buddhist but there are number of shinto subjects among the later scrolls satirical scrolls and caricatures the genji scroll the greatest monument of yamato is the group of illustrations on the tail of genji usually attributed to the painter takayoshi who was active in early 12th century now disturbed between the tokugawa art museum at nagoya and gotoho museum in tokyo these are remnants of a series of hand scrolls cut into small panels and now kept flat to avoid the wear incurred by the constant rolling and unrolling necessary to view scrolls the narrative scheme of organization is fairly primitive each picture follows the block of text it illustrates in strict alternation in marked contrast with later more complexly organized narrative scrolls these are individual separate pictures and enclosed as a frame between blocks of text the text pages are almost as decorative as the illustrations one of the earliest and most celebrated artistic of aristocratic art works are the narrative hand scrolls illustrating the tale of genji a romance of japanese court life written in the late 10th century by lady murasaki shikibu today out of 10 original scrolls only four survive the earliest set of illustrations on this theme comes from 1120 to 1130 and only survives in fragments 19 segments of illustrations and 20 of narrative in elegant kana calligraphy by at least four great 
calligraphists of the day. At present, these fragments are a part of Tokugawa and Gotoho Museum. The writing of the text is considered as important as an art in the painting themselves. The novel of 54 chapters in uncertain order originally must have covered at least 20 separate scrolls with hundreds of illustrations and thousands of sheets of calligraphy. The surviving illustrations are mostly from the last so-called 10 chapters of Yuji. These Genji paintings and calligraphies are works of art which was circulated among the aristocratic connoisseurs. In the painting Kashi Wagi 1, it is a hand scroll, belongs to Ri Mikai Foundation, Kyoto, Japan, dated to 12th century. The retired emperor Suzaku, now a monk, is full of concern for his daughter Princess Nayosin and is quietly weeping, his daughter stricken with guilt and remorse at having Kashiwagi's child is insisting upon taking the tonsure. She is prostrate on the tatami on the left, unable to tell her father the truth or to face her husband Genji seated below center. Genji for his part is full of compassion for his wife and tries to dissuade her from her woes. In the text, Genji is described as regretting his own inability to give up the worldly life and envying his father-in-law's resolution. To the right behind the curtain, ladies in waiting share the sorrow. There is found no characterization of facial expression. The mask-like faces are painted in the technique known as hiki me kagi hana, line, eye hook, nose, which indicates features but does not identify individuals. The ancient and artistic device or technique known as fuki nuki yatai, a bird's eye view with the ceiling and often wall partitions removed, the blown away roof. In these scenes, the roof of a palace is eliminated, showing the interior and its romantic episode from a bird's eye view allowing the viewer to have a voyeur's participation. In addition, there is an architectural arrangement, perhaps a disturbing pattern of posts and beams or some feature of the season, to which the Japanese were always acutely sensitive. That underscores the emotion of the scene depicted. Reading the calligraphy portions, one would be familiar with the text and would recognize the characters by their relative positions and postures. Characteristically, such scenes show the tension first preceding an action, not the action itself. This apparently tranquil scene, nevertheless reveals emotional turbulence by subtle and effective means. The psychological isolation of the characters is symbolized by the silk room dividers which are here placed to form cells of separate emotion. Elegant black ribbons hang from the curtains in dismay 
between the princess and her father and beside the ladies in waiting this allows the artist to show strong emotion without giving his characters unseemingly gesticulation the tension is further heightened by the sharply tilted ground plane costumes curtains and screens give color to each scene but folding and sliding screens are decorated with monochromatic chinese landscapes faces here and costumes are also drawn in high conventionalized way the so called drawn line eyes and hook shaped nose hiki meka khane used throughout serves to dispersonalize the figures and give them a common appearance the ladies have a lock separated from the mass of their hair gorgeous patterning makes every scene a finished composition as though each were a climax in the story the slow tempo and leisured pace is an apt commentary on the artificial existence of court life personalities could be recognized genji was in the forefront until politically disgraced by his wife's adultery family and amorous relationship family jealousies scheming nobles and evasive or yearning ladies and hand maidens are the fabric of which it is made in the other painting of tale of genji genji montagari soothing his wife princess yuji third scene of the yadogiri chapter to first half of the 12th century it is a hand scroll colors on paper and at present in tokugawa museum nayoga the scroll of 36 poets after the downfall of fujiwara regime something of this fairy tale quality survived in court painting notably in the scroll of 36 poets painted by fujiwara nobuzen these 36 poets were men and women of the fujiwara era who were famous for their poems in the native tongue during that period portraits of them became so popular that they were given special name kasane a immortal poet pictures the portraits in the scrolls are not of course true likeness as they were all dead when these portraits were painted nevertheless the artist has attempted to go beyond the conventional hikemi kagi hana technique and suggest the features and character of each of them the picture of ko ogemi shows the gorgeous extravagance of her dress and soft warm colors are typical of fujiwara court art but sharp angles and dramatic contrast provided by the rich black ink expresses the more viril taste of the succeeding kamakura age illustrated stories of monks and monasteries the scrolls illustrating the life stories of famous priests have the same kind of realism that is encountered in the portraits of poets diametrically opposed to the somber unalleviated mood of the court life is the shishi sen ng tales of mount shigi a lively piece of popular literature three paper scroll illustrates stories of the power of bishamon 
as miracles worked through his medium named Mayorin, an ascetic residing on the mountain top. The Chogo Sonshi Ji keeps the scroll and marks the place where the events took place. The present temple buildings are mostly of early 17th century. In one scroll, Mayorin is able to restore the health of the Emperor Daigo through prayers said on the mountain. In another, his eldest sister from whom he had been separated for 20 years and who set out to find him sits in front of the great Buddha in Nara overnight and in her dream is told to follow a purple cloud. She locates Myron on the mountain top. Both scrolls have text on either end. The scroll which attracts the most interest, however, has no text known as the scroll of flying storehouse with scenes that run into each other and the repeated appearance of the key elements. It tells the story of the support of Mayorin by a rich man living in the valley below. He fills a rice bowl from his storehouse daily which flies through the air to Mayorin's side. But once while taking stock of his supplies, the rich man fails to the bowl. Busting with energy, the bowl takes the whole storehouse with it, guiding the building up the mountain. The man climbs the mountain to recover his rice bales, of which are returned to Myron together with the bowl, but he keeps the storehouse. The daily flight of the rice bowl had been hardly worth noting, but when the entire storehouse sailed through the air, the populace ran out of their houses, waving and shouting widely. Done in rapid, sketchy fashion, the drama is caught from a sharp angle of vision, with the people perilously close to a sheer and actually non-existent cliff postures and gestures violently exaggerated in the light washes of color are loose and animated. There is an earthy, physical, spontaneous repose that underscores a simple belief in the magical powers of the mountain deity. An excellent example of this type is a set of three scrolls of stories about Mount Shigi, which illustrates the legend of the monk Myron, who restored a temple there in the early 10th century. In the first scroll, the story is about the magic rice bowl, which flew about collecting food for his master and of what happened to a rich farmer who neglected to fulfill his duty as a patron. The second scroll relates how Myron cured the emperor from a great distance. The third is how his aged sister was miraculously reunited with him after years of separation. As regards the characteristics of the scroll, the Myron set are more like the film itself and the stories see through a continuous landscape. The sense of movement being intensified by a masterful use of ink lines in the Chinese manner. Color is added only for greater realism. The figures are drawn with lively humor, verging on caricature. The inner apartments of the palace in the second scroll shows that Myron must have been 
a professional attached to the court the 12th and 13th century buddhist hand scrolls depict how successfully the chinese ink painting of the shung dynasty was incorporated into the now maturing yamato pictorial biography of aipen shonen this important set of scrolls concerns the life of leading figure in the popular nembutsu movement which taught salvation through faith 